in this module, I'm going to talk about uh, chi-square and f distributions, the children of the normal. So when we're done, you should be able to answer these questions. What is the chi-square distribution? How is it related to the normal? How is chi-square distribution related to the sampling distribution of the variance? You should be able to test a population value of the variance, and you should be able to put a confidence interval around a estimated population value. Uh, for the S distribution, you should be able to say how it's related to the normal and to chi-square. And then we'll also actually use F distribution to test about the uh, uh, hypothesis about the equality of variances in two populations. Okay, so uh, let's get started. So there are lots of theoretical distributions both continuous and discrete. So you've seen the binomial already. Same example of discrete. Um, Al calls these test statistics, and there's four that we use a lot. So there's Z, the unit normal. There's T, there's chi-square, and F. Z and T are related to the sampling distribution of means. Chi-square and F are related to the sampling distribution of variances. Okay, so let's talk about the chi-square distribution. You remember that a z-score is a score less the mean divided by the standard deviation. It's the score minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Z tells us where the score is in relation to the mean in standard deviation units. So if it's zero, it's right on the mean. If it's plus one, it's one standard deviation above the mean. If it's minus one and a half, it's standard deviation and a half below the mean. Um, the z for the unit normal has this meaning, but in addition, these, these scores are normally distributed. So with the unit normal, we've got what we typically call z, and uh, it, it has the same properties, uh, but it's normally distributed. So if we square these deviates, we get little z squared, and that is the score minus the mean. So this would be, you know, a difference between the score and zero, and this would be one if it's a unit normal. Um, and if we square these things and we look at the distribution uh, from the unit normal, We've got what's called chi-square with one degree of freedom. And the sampling distribution of that thing from the unit normal would look like this. So you remember the unit normal has a mean of zero. And most of the scores are close to that. And when we square things, you know, if, if it's a small number, it tends to get even smaller. So 0.1 squared is 01. So for the unit normal, most of the values will be close to zero. And then two is pretty far away from the zero. And if we square that, we get four. So here we are at um, two standard deviations out either way. Obviously, we don't have negative numbers here because we're squaring everything. So this is what the distribution of squared deviates from the unit normal will look like. And that's called chi-square with one degree of freedom. Well, what if we took two values from the unit normal, squared each of them, and added them? So we get, you know, this, we got this. So we're, in each case, we're taking the score minus the mean over the standard deviation, square that thing. And so uh, basically what we get is the first one squared plus the second one squared. So we add them together. So... Uh, Again, you know, we can have the, a minimum value of zero. Most of the values coming out of these things are zero. Uh, and then the maximum goes on to infinity because the z is normal is unbounded on the top and bottom. Uh, but, you know, when we add two of them together, we're getting a little bit bigger mean than what we had before. So the, the chi-square distribution is a sum of these little squared deviates. Each square deviation is taken from the unit normal from this 0, 1. 
And the shape of chi-square depends on the number of squared deviates that are added together. So I'm going to show you some examples of that. Okay, so the distribution the shape depends on one parameter, it's degrees of freedom. So we people call it df. Some people in their tables in their in their writings call it v. Um, as the degrees of freedom gets large, the shape of the distribution becomes more normal. So here we have the one I've already showed you with one degree of freedom. So this is one value of z squared. What's the distribution of that look like? Here we have three. So if we add three of these little guys together, we get a distribution that looks like that. So it's got a, a nasty skew to it. And we got five of these added together. Now it's not so so strange looking. It's you know it's bounded on the bottom here and doesn't have a top end, but still it's 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 a skewed distribution, but with 10, look at that, it's actually starting to look pretty nice. And, um, you know, oftentimes we have in psychology um, large numbers. So we have 50 or 100 people or whatever. And so the distribution of the variance is not so ugly with uh, a, that many degrees uh, of freedom. When you get down to a small number, though, you can see that the distribution is pretty ugly. Okay, so this is the, the distribution of chi-square. Uh, so this is a, a theoretical or test distribution, and we're going to use it for various things. There's tons of tables of this you can find it everywhere. It's in, in your computer programs like Excel and R and SAS and SPSS and all that. Uh, things that you should know are the expected value of the chi-square distribution, distribution is the degrees of freedom. So with, uh, you know, five degrees of freedom, the mean is five. With three degrees of freedom, the mean would be three. With ten degrees of freedom, the mean it would be ten. Uh, expected variance of the distribution is two times the degrees of freedom. So uh, with uh, five degrees of freedom, the mean would be 5 and 5 times 2 would be 10 would be the uh, the variance of that thing. Standard deviation would be the square root of that. Um, so there's tables that you can find the 5% or 1% values or the, the critical values of chi-square. And you should also know that chi-square is additive. So we have chi-square with uh, these two degrees of freedom, that's the same as chi-square with the first one, chi-square with the second one. So chi-square of 5 and 10 would be chi-square of 15. And that would be what we'd get if we'd add up chi-square of 5 and chi-square of 10. Okay. Now, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the application of this. So this is a um, just you know a theoretical statistic, and it turns out to be related to the, the variance of a distribution. So you remember the formula for variance is the score minus the mean squared, add them up, divide by n or n minus 1, depending on what you're trying to do. Uh, here it is. This is the, the unbiased estimate of the um, population variance. And you know, we were just looking at scores, z scores, right? We got this squared. And um, we would add up uh, any number of them to get chi-square distribution with, you know, two, three, four, five, six, however many degrees of freedom. So um, you can see this: the squared deviation is in the formula for the sample variance. It's also in that that squared. Some of these squared things is in the chi-square distribution. Um, okay, so. Uh, chi-square, if we want to get it to the unit normal, then, then different populations will have different values. So we're going to divide by the um, population variance to get back to the chi-square distribution. Right, so here's a sample variance, and it's related to the chi-square distribution like this. So what is the, the sampling distribution of this guy here. So we would compute this guy over and over and over again. And if we, that that value, because it's a sampling distribution, the, the value uh, 
will change from sample to sample because we're talking sampling distribution. We picked a value of n like 10 or 100, and that will be the same. And this population value will be the same every time. So this thing will wander around somewhat. And the, the result that we'll get, the sampling distribution that we'll get, will be chi-square. And it will be the chi-square with however many, if we did 10 or 15 or whatever it is, the sample size, it'll be that chi-square value. Okay, so uh, we multiply the sample variance by n minus 1 to get the sum of squares. And then to get back into chi-square, which is based on the unit normal, we have to normalize or divide through by the population variance, which could be any big or small number. Okay, so we can use information about this sampling distribution to set confidence intervals for our estimated population value. We can use it for um, conducting statistical tests. Okay, so here's a, an example testing an exact hypothesis about a variance. So here's the the, the nomenclature, the null hypothesis is that our variance is equal to some specific value. So we're going to test the null and population variance has a specific value. We're going to pick alpha, typically 05, and find the rejection region. And then, so we set this up, we plug in our hypothesized population value into, and you use our sample variance, and we compare that to chi-square, which is our theoretical distribution. So we have critical values of chi-square, and we can compare it to here and figure out if it's significant or not. So here's an example. We have 30 people sampled at random from some population, and we have a measure of height in inches for each one of them. So uh, let's suppose that our uh, null hypothesis is that the variance in our population is greater than 6 and a quarter. And our alternative is that the variance in the population is less than six and a quarter. So this is a one-tailed test, and our alternative is on the small side. So we want our rejection region to be on the small side rather than the high side. And uh, let's just say that we've decided instead of 05, we want to be really conservative, and we're going to set alpha to 01. And how do we do that? Well, we've got uh, 30 people, so n is 30. We've got... Uh, Suppose that we took our measures of everybody and we computed that sample variance is 4.55. Um, our degrees of freedom would be n minus 1, so that's 29. That means that the mean of the uh, chi-square distribution is 29. Uh, we are going to get this value. So we've got, we use this to uh, compute our test for chi-square. So n minus 1 is 29, 4.55 is our observed variance, 6 and a quarter is our hypothesized. Our value of chi-square is 21.11. All right, That's less than 29, so it is on the small side. But we set alpha at 01, and uh, for a 99 uh, percentile chi-square value is 14. So 14 is below 21 and since we're going small side we need to see something less than 14 in order to say that it's significant so we can't reject the null. Okay now suppose, in, so we got the same data now but instead of this null and this alternative we're going to have the same uh, standard, six and a quarter is uh, our null and our alter alternative is not six and a quarter. So now we need to go up and down uh, in the chi-square distribution to find the rejection region. So again we've got n is 30 and observed is 4.55. So now with 29 degrees of freedom, chi-square we're going to go 995 so we want the you know uh, alpha is 01 so half of 01, 05. Um, 13.121 and with Q is 005 is 52.336. So our value of 21 is still between these two things. So we can't reject the null that um, in this case it's equal to 6.25. Okay, so uh, we we uh, did a, an exact test for um, a population value. 
more often, instead of testing a value of the variance, we're going to want to estimate a variance. And if we want to communicate our uncertainty about that estimate and be clear to ourselves and to other people that we don't know everything, then we can use chi-squared to uh, estimate the confidence interval around our population value. So here we go. So we want the 95% confidence intervals. We're going to take the sample variance, degrees of freedom, chi-square with n minus 1 and 0.25. Uh, in the middle here, and then the other side of the bracket is going to be n minus 1 in the variance, and then chi-square n minus 1 are degrees of freedom and 975. So we go 0.25 and 975 with chi-square. That's going to give us uh, a 95% confidence interval. So, for example, suppose that we have uh, 15 people, our sample estimate is 10, and then our degrees of freedom are 14, and for Q, 025, so now we're at the uh, bottom, right, uh, is 26.12, and then for 975, it's 5.63. And so if we plug those values in here, we get, where's our estimate, is 10. Uh, it could be for between 5.36 and 24.87. So that's our confidence interval for this population value, which we estimate to be 10. 10 is our best guess, and we think it's really most likely between 5 and change and about 25, something like that. Okay, so you can use chi-square to find a confidence interval for your variance estimate and that communicates honestly to your reader and to yourself the uncertainty that you have about the actual value of the variance. And here is pretty, pretty big, <laughs> pretty big uh, confidence interval, right? So you don't have a whole lot of a lot of certainty about where that thing really is. Okay, normality assumption: we assume normal distributions to figure sampling distributions and therefore the p-levels. Uh, violations in normality don't usually wor worry us too much for means because as n gets large the sampling distribution of the mean is going to be normal because of the central limit theorem. Uh, violations of normality are a little bit more serious for testing variances. Uh, you know, if you have a small sample uh, it, it could be off. Uh, so if you're going to use this kind of test, the uh, you know chi-square test, look at your data. So you can do that normality test uh, with with a QQ plot. Okay. So now um, computer applications. Um, in R, so R functions, the Q chi-square gives us quantiles. So uh, if we want the 95th percentile of uh, chi-square, 7 degrees of freedom, that value is 14.07. Uh, Same uh, distribution, quantile for 0.99 is 18.48. Uh, probability for chi-square with 7, I'm sorry, uh, with a value of 7 and degrees of freedom of 7 is 0.57. So remember, um, the mean is the expected value. So you'd think, well, I'd expect if, if this is the mean and I got 7 degrees of freedom, I expect the probability to be 0.5. But that would be true if it were normal because the mean would be right there in the exact middle with the median and the mode. But chi-square, remember, is a little skewed, becomes increasingly normal as the degrees of freedom increases. So here's a probability of chi-square with a value of 100 and degrees of freedom of 100. And you can see P is 0.52. And that's closer to the 0.50 that you would expect if things were exactly normal. So as the, the degrees of freedom increases, the shape of chi-square distribution becomes increasingly normal. And the things fall where you would expect them to based on the normal more and more. Uh, Here's the random number sampler, sampler, <laughs> sampler in uh, in R, and uh, R for random chi-square. Uh, this says how many I want, and this is the distribution I want to take it from. So with de three degrees of freedom, uh, 
when I print it out, it says here's your row number one and here's the four values that uh, you asked for. Unless you set a seed every time you run this, you're going to get different random numbers. They're random draws from that um, distribution. Okay. Review. You sampled 25 children from an elementary school fifth grade class and you measured the height of each. You wonder whether these children are more variable in height than typical children. Samples variance in height is 4. So this is the number that you got from your measures of height. Compute a confidence interval for this variance. So what's the population estimate? Where's the confidence interval? What's the bottom? What's the top? If the variance of height in children in fifth grade nationally is 2, do you consider this sample to be ordinary? So what I'm asking you there is, you know, is this is this value of four significantly different from two? All right. So I want you to uh, <laughs> stop the video <laughs> and compute this, and then turn it back on, and I'm going to show you our computations. Um, so here's uh, here's. I uh, hope you can see this. Um, Here's chi-square, uh, here's the point 0.95 with um, 7 degrees of freedom and 99, 7 degrees of freedom, 7 and 7, 100 and 100, uh, and the random number generator. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to run the clear stuff. Okay, it cleared out the console. Now I'm going to run the chi-square stuff that I just showed you. And here we go. So... Um, Let's compare this to that. Okay, let's go backwards. All right. So now uh, it says chi square 0.95 to 7 degrees is 14.07. And here you see it's 14.07. We got 18.48. 18.48 uh, probability of chi square is 0.57. And here you see it's 5711. 52. And here we got 5188. So that's, you know, within rounding. Random numbers for chi-square, 0.6, 2.3, 2.9, 1. Okay, and here I've got uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 3.13, 2.05. .05. You can see they're not the same numbers because uh, it's the, the seed for the random number generator is is set reset each time. So if you want to set the seed to some number, you can get the same random numbers chosen every time. I generally don't do that because it sort of defeats the point of... <laughs> random number generator but uh, but that's why they're different each time so these other values where we've got the quantiles or the probabilities they must be the same otherwise something is broken but the random number should be different each time okay so now what do we got uh, chi-square review question okay so uh, the variance in the population was two variance in our sample was four we had 25 kids uh, the degrees of freedom are n minus 1, and if I run that, uh, quantile. So the 025 is uh, quantile for 025, and degrees of freedom are the degrees of freedom for sampling, so this would be 24, and the 975, same deal. So the, the quantiles, the values of chi-square, are 12.4 and 39.36. Now, to get the boundaries, the lower bound, we're going to take the degrees of freedom and multiply it by the sample variance and divide it by the value of chi-square. An upper value, same deal, except for, you know, we've chosen the quantiles for uh, 975 and 025, and those are 12.439.6. And actually, I want to see what the result is. So, all right. So lower bound is two, about 2.4, and upper bound is 7.7, .7, and uh, our sample value was 4. So that's our best guess. Is 2 a reasonable value? Well, I would say no, because our boundaries are uh, 2.4 and 7.7. .7. Seven. So two is outside that. Uh, outside that value. So I would say our people are quite variable compared to the population. 